Hi, this series of videos is going to go through, through the AQA for the Pure 4 January 2013 exam paper. I'm going to split the video into three bits. There's going to be a try section where you are going to have a go at the question for yourself. If you're unsure as to what to do, you can watch the hint part of the video. There I will give you a hint to how you can go about answering the question. You can then pause the video and have a go at the um, question yourself. The next part of the video is going to be the answer. Uh, and in this part of the video I'm going to go through the whole answer to the question. You can pause the video whenever you want to. I suggest that you pause the video so that you can do any bits that you can do on your own and only watch the video to check your answer or to uh, give you a, a bit of a helping hand with finding the solutions. Okay, so question number one. Just to remind you, this is the AQA further Pure 4 January 2013. Question number one is um, you've got two planes uh, where P is a non-zero constant. Given that the angle theta between the planes um, is such that cos theta is equal to two thirds, you're required to find the value of p. What I'd like you to do is pause the video and try this question now. Okay, the next part of the video is going to be a hint. So, um, in this particular question, we're given the two planes and we want to work out the value of p. The, the extra bit of information that we've been given is that the angle between the two planes, the cosine of that angle, is going to be 2 thirds. So we need to use the fact that a dot b is going to be equal to the magnitude of a times by the magnitude of b cos theta. Okay, we know cos theta is two thirds and because we're finding the angle between the planes that's going to be the same as the angle between the normals to the planes and we can find the normals to the planes by using the Cartesian equations that we've been given. What you need to do is use find the normals to the planes and substitute the values into this equation here and then you should be able to work out what the value p is. So pause the video now and see if you can have a go at finishing this question off. Okay, in this part of the video I'm going to go through the answer. So we had our equation written down here I'm now going to substitute the values in for a and b. So if I call um, the normal to this equation vector a, that's going to be the coefficients of x, y, and z. So 1, 2, 2. So 1, 2, 2. And I'm going to find the top product of that and this one here, which is p, 3, 0. And that's going to be equal to the magnitude of A, so that's going to be um, the magnitude, so it'll be the square root of 1 squared and 2 squared and 2 squared. Times by the magnitude of this here, which is going to be P squared plus 3 squared. And we're going to times that by cos theta, but we know that cos theta is equal to two thirds, so I'm just going to times that by two thirds. Okay, so simplifying this, that's going to be p plus six plus zero, so p plus six is going to be equal to, this is going to be the square root of nine, which is three. I'm just going to bring this to the front over here, so that's going to be two thirds of three, and this bit here is going to be the square root of p squared plus nine. 
Okay, so two thirds of three is just going to be um, two. So I'm going to have p plus six is equal to two times the square root of p squared plus nine. And I can um, simplify this further because I can square both sides to get rid of the square root sign. So I'm going to have p plus six squared is going to be equal to 4 times p squared plus 9. I've just squared that, so I'm just left with p squared plus 9. If I expand everything, I'm going to have p squared plus 12p plus 36 is equal to 4p squared plus 36. I'm now going to simplify this by bringing everything to um, this side, so I'm going to have um, 3p squared is equal to 12, sorry, 3p squared take away 12p is equal to 0, and um, dividing that by and factorising, I'm going to have p times p take away 4 is equal to 0. Now what we're trying to find is the value of p, but we're also told that p is a non-zero constant. So my solutions here are going to be p is equal to 0 or p is equal to 4. However, because p is a non-zero constant, we can't have this one, so um, we're told that p is not equal to zero, so that means our solution is going to be here, which is p is equal to four. Okay, thanks very much. Uh, please join me for the next question.